Thank you so much, gentlemen, for that. Looking forward to the next update. Always informative, Donnie. Right now, I'm going to bring on uh, our next guest, Ryan Schreiber, VP of Industry and Growth at Metaphora. What's going on there, Ryan? How okay. are you, my friend? I haven't talked to you in a while. Okay. Hey, it's I know. It's that time of month again, I guess, huh? Hey. Well, Thomas, <laughs> good to see you, buddy. I was actually thinking the other day I hadn't seen you in a while. So what's that, going on? How are you? You kept me in hiding. I'm doing well, though. It's good to see you, uh, see you too. I hope to see you in person as well. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, I'm going to Columbus in a couple weeks too, by the way, Vincent. I'm planning on burning the city down for you, so just FYI. Hallowed ground, brother. Hallowed ground, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you that, genuflect anyway, before to see you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. what's go, what's going on, man? I mean, we're coming out of the season of of COVID, hopefully, and we're going to get rid of all this innovation yeah. and disruption. It's all over, right? Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, it, you know, it's it'll be interesting, certainly, to see what happens over the next. Uh, uh, year or so. Yeah, um, uh, Grace put out an article maybe two weeks or three weeks ago, uh, Grace Sharkey uh, yeah. well, here on Freight Waves about kind of like VC money uh, and what the impact's going to be on the space and what we were seeing sure. at the time. And we certainly are seeing a lower investment. Um, we're seeing um, growth in terms of uh, valuations go down. Certainly you're seeing some layoffs that are maybe attendant to uh, trimming a little bit of fat, if you will, or mm -hmm. a change a strategy, you know, P44 with those layoffs recently to say, hey, we're not going to be adding as much headcount. We don't maybe need these recruiters. So, you know, we're going to um, we're going to take this opportunity to to pad the war chest a little bit in that respect. So you are certainly seeing some of that. But in, in general, like folks are still able to raise, they're still able to get mm -hmm. money. And uh, there's still that investment from the venture community and in innovation. And then from kind of the traditional brokerages, the traditional trucking companies, we're really past an inflection point. Like there's this whole concept of innovators dilemma and the whole Silicon Valley kind of ethos um, where uh, legacy players sort of aren't incentivized, if you will, to innovate. But th th that was true three, four years ago. It's definitely not true now. We are still seeing our customers, the bigger players, uh, driving toward innovation, driving toward uh, lowering their cost to serve in ways that uh, that really seem like they're going to continue, even in a down deflationary rate oh, environment. Yeah. Uh, type yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I think when you said it's it's really a repositioning type of thing, it's not a, a, a lessening mm -hmm. to a degree of innovation. I think you're absolutely spot on there. I think one of the things that people get confused is is between you know uh, just reinventing the wheel or me too type of innovation, a prettier package of mm -hmm. what is already being done in innovation. Can you kind of define that and kind of walk us through that? What is the diff? What is really innovating mean versus some of these posers? I mean, there's some posers out there, right? <sighs> I don't know that I would judge people on being posers, if you will, right? I mean, uh, it, Vincent, we've been doing this for a while, right? I sure. mean, you know, if you even go back, even go back five years ago or, you know, so building your own TMS was an opportunity to really kind of like show that you were a certain level of maturity as an, inter especially for intermediaries. Mm -hmm. Hey, you've made it. I can build my own TMS, right? And, and but and and that, and that mattered because of the way that software was built or, or you know at the time or what some of the limitations were uh, of software and some of that still exists right but the story of technology has always been sort of maybe always will be i don't know maybe if we get to a terminator type future this won't be the case but you know what <laughs> was differentiating technology is going to become table stakes a great example of this is uh, tr digital tracking, right? I mean, it was a differentiator for you four or five years ago, right? If you had, if you used macro point and you were able to get some digital tracking driver, mobile apps is a good example of this today. There's no reason to be doing these things. And so people just need to slow down from time to time and say to themselves, like, do I need to, do I need to build this? Do, do I, is there something that's really, really special? You're going to deal with trade-offs when you buy technology, you're, you are going to deal with a trade-off against sort of your ideal state. But is it worth the investment to have 
uh, you know, to, 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 for that trade off, if you're really going to be, cause you have to maintain it, right. You have to continue building on it so that it stays best in class and that investment might not be worth it. And so what we're working with our customers on is how do you identify or to identify the things that are really going to make a difference in their business and what that time horizon is for it to remain differentiated. And then what, what are some of the trade-offs for what's off the shelf? So it's really just a process of asking intentional questions about why, why am I trying to do this? And, and do I need, do I need to do it? Mike, do I need to do it? That's a really important question. It is very important. Yes. You think given this current environment, so let's say I'm a, I'm a VC, you got a bunch of money in the past few years was burning through it. Now the, the winter is coming and comes to valuations, your next round, I can still get funding, but you know, everyone wants to IPO. We all have our timelines and stuff. We want to make that fat payoff. Um, is this something where with this reduction in VC activity, are we going to see kind of a, a hibernation of sorts where folks are not going to try to IPO or SPO or SPAC or whatever other acronyms I can put together in my can of alpha, alphabet soup? I, you know, that's a good question. I think it's a little too early to tell. Um, you, listen, the reality is most businesses are, most venture funded businesses are going to fail. The vast majority fail. Even after series B, series C, the, the vast majority of them still fail. The ones that do exit, the vast majority of those exits aren't an IPO or SPAC or Alphabet Soup, right? Maybe Scrabble would be a better example because <laughs> then I can pick and choose a little bit better. But uh, the, the vast majority of those are going to get acquired in some form or fashion. And we are still seeing a, a, a lot of interest in acquisition. Uh, and, and I think we're going to see that pick up because if valuations do go down uh, or, or, or slow down, the valuation growth slows down. If it is a increment, even if it's incrementally harder to raise your next round, you're going to see companies that need the cash and, and that aren't able to get it through debt financing or through, um, uh, or, 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 or through another uh, venture round. And, and so acquisitions, I think, are going to pick up over the next couple uh, of years. The, the other thing to consider is that, you know, in our, in our industry, and I keep saying this, and I'm going to take the opportunity to say it here, there may be a broader recession. Winter may be coming sort of broadly to financial markets. I don't know. I'm not an economist. Mm -hmm. Like, let's mm -hmm. ask, you know, let's ask Anthony and, and the team over there. But uh, in our, in our industry, we're a consumer-based economy here in the U.S., right? We don't make a lot of stuff. And so any changes in terms of consumer spending is incremental to the volume of freight that really needs to be moved in aggregate, right? Because people still need groceries. They still need... What drives our industry from an economic outcome perspective is the supply and the demand of drivers, right? And so we can still flourish if the broader economy is hurting a little bit and vice versa, right? 2019, the economy was great in the U.S. and we were dying. So there's that. that's something to also kind of keep in mind is what's happening in our space and the availability of folks to spend money in our space versus the broader financial markets is something that's really important to kind of like keep track of for us and keep top of mind as you think about what do you want to invest in? What are the strategic initiatives for your business over the next 12, 18, 24 months? There's the investments in the, in the VCs, et cetera, and growing in the innovations that are there. Without the disruption that we've had in, in, in all the supply chain over the last couple of years, does that explosion happen at a much slower pace? I would think it would. And uh, really, and, and moving forward, as we come out of this, it kind of slows down. Does that natural, like, less tension or angst about the supply chain lessen that, that, uh, that, that popularity of investing in that tech? Or on the first, so your first question is like, would it have happened without the focus on supply chain? And I think the answer is still yes. It maybe would have happened with a slower velocity. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I, I had a venture back startup a few years back, and and you know, it, it's it's a gambit. Like, don't raise money if you don't have to. Every startup that I work with, that I'm an advisor for, or whatever I might do with them, my first question is like, you know, do you have to raise money? And and is if if you were able to grow profitably, would you? And there are there are reasons to raise venture to be able to invest, et cetera. But 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 do, you know do, don't do it if you don't have to. My friend Anshu from Leaf Logistics said that to me one time, and it just stuck with me forever. Of like, why are you raising this money? Maybe it would have certainly happened at a slower pace, but that growth is going all the way back to twenty, at least twenty sixteen. Yeah, I don't think that it's. I, I the cat is out of the bag in terms of how much opportunity there is in the supply chain logistics space for 
quote unquote disruption that these companies, the, the adventure or that, um, or that uh, technology companies are looking to target. So I, I don't, it's confirmation bias perhaps, but, but I think that because the cat's out of the bag, because everybody knows how effed up it is at this point, like, and, and how antiquated most of the technology is that's really powering all of this and how complex the problems are that we're trying to solve. Uh, I, I, I maybe it slows down, but it slows down incrementally again as compared to maybe other um, other investment uh, uh, growth in the space uh, in other spaces. Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense because even with the disruption that's going down, even though it's not tech, technology based, you know the threat of port stoppages spooks the hell out of people. You can see it on, in, on, on Twitter and and so on, and on LinkedIn where you know if the ILW were to strike, or if the rail were, were to strike, you've yeah. got these choke points that without this collaboration and without this investment, like moving more freight over to the wet, uh, over to the East Coast and the innovations that are going there uh, down there in those ports, that helps us avoid the threat of, or the impact of the threat of a strike there in Port of LA or, and, and Long Beach, et cetera, right? So even those threats of change or disruption keep it in the forefront, right? Yeah, I, there's also the concept of like, look, like these jobs in transportation and logistics, they're shitty jobs. I don't know if I can say that, but they're shitty jobs. You know, uh, I guess you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do, I guess I'm going to do it if, you know, if Craig sends me an invoice from the FCC or whatever. I don't, you know. <laughs> I don't think but, so. But, <laughs> uh, you know, but but they're they're who would choose to be a truck driver? Who would choose to be a dock worker in in, in a uh, uh, you know, like an in, in international port? Who would choose to be a freight broker? If if there are other options, these are really difficult, very stressful jobs, and so you know we need to make the experience of folks in the industry better. You know, Kevin Hill and I talk about this all the time. It's like I. I, I Every day brokering freight, it was the most miserable day of my life. Every, sure. You know, like every day, it's the whole, it's the whole uh, office space. Like, you know, if you're seeing me, it's the worst day of my life because every day is worse than the day before it. You know, and, and if, it is, if we can make that experience better, that's worth doing. But also, to your point, it's going to be difficult to continue to recruit people into the space if they have other options. So we need to consider how we're able to do this uh, better because uh, there is that imperative and 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 it's de-risking the business to not be so reliant on institutional knowledge or be reliant on being able to hire 10 15 mm. people a month you know or or be reliant on being able to recruit drivers even though your driver turnover is 120 percent like the, that's a big risk for the business and most people realize that right and, and 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 so we need to make the broader experience better for the individuals in the space some of that's technology there's a lot of other obviously things with that as well but some of it some of it really comes down to technology and and how much we ask of these people to figure out solve deal with etc excellent stuff as always ryan you have a wonderful rest of your day and have a great hey, great. Uh, yeah. great 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 have a great trip up to uh columbus ohio and the uh football yeah. mecca that it is my friend right I'll now send, i'm going to talk i'll, send, I'll send you a charlie brown picture if you know what i mean but uh, right. yeah, we'll, uh, <laughs> i love it brother all right guys see you next month peace my friend we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back